try to please um, take up to 49? It's the Simpatico Ensemble. It's a chamber ensemble. Um, it has two components. It also has a choral component. So sometimes we do choral concerts, but this is an orchestra concert. Um, and we found it about 2006. Um, so friends wanted to get together and make music, and we wanted to not just play music, but actually try to make music together and, and find a small enough group that we could do a lot of different things, but also have an intimacy and a connection and a simpatico. That was the idea. This is chamber group, which means this is a very small amount of people playing together compared to the symphony orchestra. This uh, violin concerto, actually a uh, violin concerto written for two violins and the orchestra. So I play with uh, my husband and he plays second violin. So this particular concerto written for two violins and the orchestra. Also there are some concerto written for three or four violins and the orchestra. So it's very uh, difficult to play in a way as a soloist with the group because you have to be part of the group at the same time and a soloist. So you really have to hear what's going on in the orchestra, how other voices join you or behind you or ahead of you and be just with it. There are people who are coming because Vivaldi's on the program, and they love Vivaldi. And I love Vivaldi, or else I wouldn't program something. I have a hard time playing music I don't enjoy. But then also, too, that Leroy Anderson, Plink, Plank, Plunk, that's just a, what I call a ditty. People love it, and it's just, it doesn't have to be, everything doesn't have to be a, a thought process. You can just listen to some music and just enjoy it. It's kind of more like what pop and music is. Most people today don't really dig that deep when they listen to the radio and listen to pop music. You don't have to always do that with every classical piece. It, classical music at the time was pop music. So it, it's not that it has to be high-browed or highfalutin or you know, it has to be something serious. It just has to be something that people enjoy. And I think that we're trying in this program to show that there are lots of different types of music to enjoy. Well, I definitely think live music is hugely important. Uh, especially for kids, I think, because I look at myself, like one of the main reasons that I've chosen to go on this path of music is because my parents took me to so many live music concerts when I was younger and I think that really made an impact on my life because I want every time I saw one I was like I want to be up there playing with them, so now I am. I love playing in a chamber-sized orchestra because you really feel like you have responsibility. So even though like for this concert I'm sitting in the back of seconds, it's not the same as when you're one of 50 violinists in a big orchestra that you feel like, well, you could just sit back here, you know, and no one will hear you here. Everyone has equal responsibility. So I think it's really great to be able to collaborate and sort of the whole group moves as a whole and we feel where each other are going and we mimic each other's dynamics and articulations. My name is Edmundo Ramirez and I play the viola. Well, I've been playing with this ensemble for a couple of years and actually um, I enjoyed a lot um, like the, the interaction of the musicians, not only in the personal, you know, like getting along together, but also musically. Generally, um, when you play an ensemble, which is a little, maybe a little bigger, um, you normally get to play a little less because you are kind of like a harmony part, you know, you have some interesting parts now and then, but um, the great thing about playing here is that you get a chance to play more and be more active, you know, with ensemble. We have a conductor that also composes, so it's bringing something uh, different from just, you know, conducting the orchestra and the ensemble, you know. And, so, and one of the pieces that uh, we're playing today is a composition by him, and um, it's very nice and very interesting because it gives a different flavor to the whole program. So it makes it really special and unique. Well, it's, it's a beautiful church. I think the acoustics are really great. Also helped a lot to the, to the mix of the sounds and you know, and also to, to hear really clearly at the same time what everybody else is playing. The acoustics in the church are really fantastic and it's an opening for 
the various groups that have come in uh, from chamber ensembles to jazz to uh, Broadway show tunes that have been sung. Providing the Sounds Good concert series is a way to reach out to the larger community. It's a wonderful way to invite people in. Um, and the various offerings that we provide reach not just uh, a specific segment, but a, again, a wide cross-section of people in the community and a way to open the doors of St. Francis to any number of individuals. Mm -hmm.